Greetings to all of you gardeners everywhere. And we're so happy that you have joined us. This is Mid-American Gardener, and we're gonna talk about plants and flowers and gardens and maybe even diseases, bugs, who knows. Mm -hmm. I'm Diane Nolan, and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department. So I'll cover questions like cut flower care, maybe perennials, a little bit of landscaping, but we have three really talented people. So let's find out who's here with me. And if you can direct your questions to their expertise, that would be very organized of you. Thank you in advance. I'm gonna go first to Dyke Barkley. Hi there, Dyke. Hello. Yeah, my name's Dyke Barkley. I am from Lakeland College and uh, Barkley Farms. And my specialty is probably uh, perennials and grasses and kind of growing a lot of different plants. I'm gonna answer a question here. I've got, uh, somebody said they bought an akibia vine about seven years ago and it's kind of gotten large and they weren't sure what to do with it. And akibia vine can definitely get large. I've got it in my yard. It'll send runners along. What You can be mean to that thing. Cut way back on it. You're not gonna hurt it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's got five leaves, uh, little chocolate and purple colored flowers on it. But cut it way back. You, may, you can cut it to the ground, cut it back to your trellis. The other thing is uh, take those tails and just kind of wind them around. It, it has a tendency to want to take off and go sideways. If you want it to fill in a trellis, just keep moving it around and stuffing it around. And if it goes sideways, stray hair, just chop that off. And that plant will take that uh, sun or shade. Good little plant. It is. It can be aggressive, so just be mean back to it. Keep it in check. Keep it in check. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Dyke. And then in the middle is Marianne Metz. Hi, Marianne. Good evening. How are you? Um, Marianne Metz. I am a, a horticulturalist and a landscape designer and have been in the business for um, a long time, so I'm really passionate about plants. And um, my email this evening is about surprise lilies. Um, can you cut off the top of surprise lilies and plant them to grow more surprise lilies? If not, is the only way to get more the way we separate bulbs? Well, the genus is like chorus, and unfortunately, you cannot cut the, the flowers off and get new plants from them. They do, however, make really good cut flowers in their fragrance, so they're really lovely to enjoy like that. Now is the time to dig them up after they flower, so now is the time to dig them up, and they are bulbs, so you want to, to divide them and replant them um, again, and separate as you go, because they'll form uh, nice big clumps of bulbs in the ground. So dividing and sharing is, and now is the time to do it. Very good, they are pretty. They're beautiful. Very surprising, too, that they come up without their leaves, because their leaves are in the spring. Okay, right next to me, Jim Schuster. Hi there. Hi. I'm a retired plant pathologist with the University of Illinois, and I brought fasciation. This is um, caused currently, about only 10% of the time, by herbicides, uh, spe uh, specifically the 2,4-D type. However, they were writing about this in the 1100 ADs, and they blamed it on fairies at that time. I see. Uh, so basically, 90% <laughs> of the time, we have no idea what causes this. Uh, it can be a one-year problem, it can be a two-year problem, or a three-year, and then it reverts back to normal growth. But flat growth is weak growth, and so the recommendation mm -hmm. is cut it off and send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, you, you know, take it out because uh, when it goes back to normal growth, the weight of that new growth is eventually going to get too heavy for that flat growth to support, either in wind or just by its own weight, and then it'll snap off and leave you a hole. So as soon as you see it, uh, just put it off somewhere backwards. You have a size shoot and uh, let it go. And for a floral designer, they would be so happy. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Trim mm -hmm. it off, place it in with some other flowers, and that's fantastic. Because fantail willow, ooh, it does that a lot. So designers like that. Okay, now we have a video question, a video mail question, and we're going to go to it next. Hello, Mid-American Gardener. If you look at these vines that are growing on the fence, I'm not quite sure what these flowers are. As you can see, they're very beautiful and they're late bloomers here in the fall. And I was just wondering if you could tell me what these are. They're very pretty and they have an interesting scent. Thank you. Okay, gardeners, what is it? Yeah, well, that's definitely the sweet autumn clematis. It's a clematis that's uh, much, much easier to grow than a lot of the others. It blooms this real late, but it it's called Sweet Autumn Clematis, a good, fast grower. And I'll bet he only had one vine, not several. 
Uh, can, mm -hmm. Many times I've seen that do 25, 30, 35 feet, maybe even 40 feet. So it's probably just one vine. It will cover anything unsightly. That's, that's exactly <laughs> but it, right. But that fence looks nice. And it blooms but, on new wood, so you can mm -hmm. cut way back hard on it, maybe not to the ground, but cut it back to the fence and not have it start going over so much, and it, it won't mind that at all. Cut it back in the spring. No, don't most clematis like the bottom of their uh, uh, stems shaded and the rest? Does this one also require that? This one's no, not. It doesn't. This no. one. It requires nothing. The better soil, the better it grows, <laughs> which may be too much growth on that case. So yeah, it's not. It doesn't follow the rules. Only if you look at the leaves would you ever guess that it's a clematis. It doesn't act like the others right. at all. It's not mm -hmm. finicky, no diseases, no. Gets okay. out of control. It's not like a kibbe. It gets out of control, chop her back, and it'll come right back and do good. And you may not want to let every seed drop. I mean, <laughs> there, it, it, it does have a lot of seeds, and every one of those may germinate, so you could remove those. Now, if you have a question about what a plant is or what you know, what problem you've got in your garden, send your video email to yourgarden at gmail.com and we'll answer it on the air. All right, let's go to the phone lines, if you will. And we're gonna start first with line two and it's about lilies. Hi there, line two. Yes, uh, hi Diane. Hi there. Uh, my question is in regards to the lilies uh, that is a bulb. Mm -hmm. They're right now. They're they're I don't know three, four, five feet tall, and they're green. They're 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 already done flowered, of course. And I was wanting to know when can you transplant or dig up the bulbs that are ornamental lilies? What they are? Okay. Versus the regular root type lily. Exactly. So ornamental lilies versus day lilies. Yeah. Okay, Lilies. all you perennial enthusiasts, yeah. <laughs> let's tell him what's happening. Well, they're, they're lilliums, so uh, yeah, four to five feet tall, that's awesome. I love looking lilies in the face. <laughs> yes. That's really enjoyable. Um, you can dig those up and separate them. Um, I, I would think it was we're, we're getting on the time that you want to not do that, um, but after they've flowered, you can do that almost any time. I think spring's a good time to separate the bulbs. What do you think, Dyke? Yeah, I think it, possibly depending on how the fall is, if they would start to die back, I think you'd cut them back and dig them up and move them if you needed to. Right. I, yeah. They usually don't need that, though. I, only if you're exactly. trying to, they, right. they'll, they'll sit there for a long time without out needing messing with. Well, well, I know, nice clowns. Um, when I've ordered lilies in the Pacific Northwest, they'll actually send them after they start to die back, and, and I get them in November sometimes. Yeah. Oh, that late. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not every kind. I yeah. think it's some of the... And Maybe it may depend ones. on, because your, your tiger lilies would be faster, right. multiply quicker, where some of the hybrid ornamentals m may never multiply, so to speak. They, well, they won't get huge. So. I'm planting an Easter lily that came in a pot in, yes. in the spring, and it's in bloom right now. Oh, my. That's it, great. It came, you know, and died back and then regrew, and mm -hmm. it's in flower right now. And wow. people should plant their Easter lilies. Mm -hmm. They're Absolutely. a bulb. Yeah, it's and it may or may really not survive. I mean, when I used to do them up north, they last two or three winters and then freeze out and but I got new bulbs every year. And I yeah, always would say... Bald. I don't know if I'd move it if it still has four foot of foliage. Right. No. I would think it's going to... I would have thought this dry, or very quickly it's going to die back, and then then you could... There's still time. There's still a few weeks or months. But unless it's another. in a bad place, it's sort of like hostas. You want the clump to get bigger. Yeah. Well, see, isn't it okay. like other bulbs? You want the roots to dry down a little bit before you move so you don't get a root rot in the bulb? Because you and I think that's roots. why I received my bulbs so late from... Oh, these sure. growers is they wanted it to be a little more died back. Right. Yeah. So if some of them are, you could move them. And certainly we have the dry you know, conditions to be able to move them. Well, we really enjoyed that question. Thank you for your good question. <laughs> now let's go on to line three, and it's about a peach tree. Hi there, line three. Hi. Uh, should I prune my peach trees back? I've heard you're supposed to trim part of the new growth off. Should I do that now, or should I wait till spring? Generally, that's pruned in uh, like February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. late the, winter. Yeah, yeah, late winter before you get any bud swelling. You know, you know once they start swelling buds, that you can uh, damage the, or reduce the flowering and fruiting. So, but you want to, do, if you do it now, they may try and pop, and then have those buds freeze off, and then you have no crop next year. So, uh, wait till late winter and prune it in like last two weeks of February or the first week of March, depending okay. on how cold the winter is. And, and maybe answer backwards, I wouldn't prune any trees now. No. Peach trees or anything, it's not, you prune now, the next year's buds are gonna pop open and, and 
you're already you're just going to freak the tree out. It's not good to be doing much pruning right now. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you for your question. And let's go on to line four, and it's about allium and hosta. Line four. Hi, Diane. Hi there. I have a Beauregard allium that has been in the ground for this. This is the third year, and I have a fire and ice hosta. They were both planted at the same time. Um, in the spring, I get three leaves on the hosta, and then it disappears. Hmm. And the Beauregard allium gets foliage, and then nothing. And I was wondering if possibility of it being buried too deep. And you have rabbits? Yeah, I have rabbits that eat my hostas almost in the ground every spring, unless I uh, put uh, I mean, uh, fencing up. And then, and, and when the hostas finally have uh, firm up their leaves and have gotten kind of tired or rough, and then they tend to leave them alone. But man, the Great. first month and a half, they just chew the heck out of them. That, you, you know, that, that can happen. But one of the things I've noticed that uh, some plants just like a, a specific location. And if it's in three years, it hasn't been um, doing its thing, move it to just a slightly uh, better yeah. location or different location. And I always like to suggest that some, you, you amend your soil with a little bit of uh, organic material, some compost of some kind. Yeah, my, my first guess is if it's, if it's not growing in the multiple years, it's too dry. It's not got enough organic. Exactly. It's not a best spot. Mm -hmm. exactly. I don't think the two things are related because no. I'm thinking the allium may... It, Jog my memory, that's the one of the giant purple ones, right? Beauregard? Beauregard? I believe so. They're not notorious yeah. for being long, long, long term. I don't know why it wouldn't do it, but. Yeah, but in three um, years, you'd think it would do a little bit. It would do something, yeah. you'd think, the first yeah. year. So something's yeah, not I quite right in that site. But definitely it. full sun. It should be in full sun, for sure. I, and we didn't get that information from the caller. That's but. true. But it does need full sun. But I have mixed alliums with hostas. If it's, if it's a late flowering out, like a sugar maple, the alliums, the early alliums will come up and do all right and kind of go dormant because I've, I've put uh, Star of Persia in with the hostas because mm -hmm. that's my trick for deer repellent is mixing alliums in with the hostas and it'll slow the deer out of the hosta patch. Oh, so that's a good think, tip. Yeah. The, but but the, it's, it's, it can't the, be an early leafing one because the, the alliums won't do well. Yeah, I think but, the bigger right. ones are m a little later in the season. But so a hosta not doing well, that, that to me would probably guess dry growing conditions, move it, amend. Mm -hmm. I would probably look at that. Okay, well, boy, we like that question too. So, very good. We ha we really like our viewers. Now, we want to go to a special Did You Know segment next. Yes, we are somewhat preparing for cooler weather, even with some of our, our question. But let's not think about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're back, and we're going to have another round of emails or show and tell, whichever the case may be. So, Dyke, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Uh, th this question has to deal with rhododendrons, and it says, basically, uh, they've got a rhododendron that's been in the ground for about four years. It's never bloomed and not very tall. And they're wondering if there's something special they need to do or, or what's going on. They say it is partial shade and about two feet tall. I wonder if we're looking at two different things here. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, typical rhododendron, the blooms are going to be formed maybe a month, six weeks after they normally bloom. So basically the buds are already there. You should, you could be able to actually look at your rhododendrons and tell whether they're going to bloom next year. My guess is it's not happy. Uh, it, I suppose it could be a plant that's not doing well just to begin with. Um, but if the, if, it, if the plant looks good and doesn't have blooms, and it's been four years, I'd say let's give up. I hate to say that, but there is a point where you cut your loss. But if the plant's not growing, I'm also thinking again, rhododendrons, are, some of them in particular, need pretty good soil. They're not what I'd call stress-loving plants. Mm -hmm. So if you can't get your rhodie to grow, I, I would say organic matter, do some moisture, so on and so forth. But I also am one, if it doesn't do well in four years, maybe we need to look at a different plant for that spot. That, three years and you're out, I'm really pretty good at that. Three strikes and you're out. So four years, I would be, I don't know. And wouldn't the panel agree with that? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there is yeah. a point where you cut your loss <laughs> yeah. and try another plant. For sure. or try it may be different. sad for you. You may have some attachment, but it, if it doesn't work by then, it's time uh, to anything, move on. There isn't anything magical you're going to just 
you know, that fairy dust isn't going to work. would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. Okay, great. Now, let's move on to a question or show and tell for you. Show and Marianne. tell, yes. I brought, um, I brought some ornamental grasses, very, very popular right now in the market, and I wanted to show the diversity of their inflorescence or their flowering. The leaves are like this also, uh, but but the inflorescence I think is beautiful, and you, people see these right now. That's that's what they're blooming right now. So um, this is maybe one of the most common. It's it's uh, Calamagrostis Carl Forrester. Um, can we see it? Yeah, we can see it a little bit. Um, really upright inflorescence with a deep green foliage. Um, I even brought, I shouldn't have done this, but it's an annual penicetum, uh, the purple leaf penicetum. If I could hybridize one that were perennial, I'd oh, probably be making a lot of money. would make a lot of yes, money. Yes, I would, but I am not going to do that, so I won't be very rich. But one of the favorites, and I, uh, one of my very favorites, is this miscanthus. Uh, you see this quite a lot in um, plantings, whether it's uh, maiden commercial, grass. maiden grass, mm -hmm. silver grass, a whole bunch of different names for it. But in panicums, so real quick, I'll do just another quick one. Panicums, I really like these because they're indigenous to the Midwest, and I think they do exceptionally well. And I do have one that has finally come in the market that's beginning to get a little bit more of a purple leaf. I don't know if you can see the purple leaf, but it's kind of cool. That's yeah, my show and tell. Really pretty. And they look nice together. Yes, I think this is a beautiful bouquet. It's very mm -hmm. pretty. Who knew? You should carry it on your arm. <laughs> I <laughs> won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just a thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, what have you got for us? Okay, I have a person from Springfield who uh, made a new bed in the shade and wanted to plant in patience and then heard about downy mildew and whether or not that would be a problem. And yes, it will be. Downy mildew has been found in the Chicago area as well as in the central part of Illinois. Uh, but however, you, there is a kind of a patient uh, that is resistant. And those are the um, uh, New Guinea inpatients. And so you may want to consider that. They're not considered immune, but they are um, highly resistant to it. And then you also ask, if you can't grow in patients, what other colorful plant could I put in the shade? And there are a bunch of begonias you ought to consider. You got the wax begonias, the, which have little flowers, and you can get them in purple leaves or green leaves. You've got the angel wing type begonias, and what I really like are the tuber begonias, because mm -hmm. those flowers are intense colors. Man, I love those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are some other options. Begonias are any just hitting the markets like yeah. crazy. I've ne never seen so many pretty ones the as this year. Are yeah. Does anybody have any other uh, colorful shade colored flowers? Well, flowers not necessarily, but begonias. I, was, I don't even care yeah. if they flower. I There's was thinking coleus, ones. but coleus yeah. certainly. I mean, yeah. it's not for the flower. Yeah. Wow. Well, she said they, they, besides coleus. Oh, besides coleus. Oh, yeah. sorry. Besides coleus. Yeah. Boy, those are so pretty, though. Yes. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. We could probably, I mean, there's lots of vines, and and there's a lot of the perennials. I would put yeah. maybe um, some of the different lamiums there, but yeah. I don't know if she, she probably wants all annuals. So, But they flower nicely, too, the lamiums. They do. Yeah, the, yes. There's a lot of different purple types and you know, pinks and, and whites. whites. So, beautiful So maybe look into a perennial or two to go along with that. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to the phone lines. And we're going to start with line six, and it's about an aphid issue. Line six. Hello there. Hi. Um, I was just curious, even with this season, that we're still getting aphids, and even in our house plants in the house, and I didn't know, like, when is the season that they start going away and what I can do to control them. Okay, so aphids. Well, oh. <laughs> you can say, they don't, they don't we can all away. talk about I mean, it. No. When cold <laughs> weather takes the foliage away. out, it exactly. takes the aphids, yeah. so they yeah. don't necessarily go away. But so how much yeah. you have to start working on that? Yeah. Right now is a good time to start working on yes. it. Yes, absolutely. And insecticidal soap works very well on them, as long as you get good thorough coverage of them. And it's safe, so, yeah. you know... But you and want to get on top and bottom of the leaves. Right. And, and start working on it while the plants are still outdoors and, and uh, make the population go down somewhat before you mm -hmm. get inside and have to start working on Removing them, any yeah. bad looking leaves and yes. getting them out of the pot and in, in a way. In some cases if it's a plant you're going to bring in, sometimes aphids have a tendency to be up on the new growth and that's one plant you could prune out some of them if you're going to mm -hmm. bring it in and cut back the plant anyway. 
And that, that won't get all of them, but that'll get some. But of even them out. a soft spray, yeah, of yeah. Water just a hose, yeah, without yeah. any kind of yeah. insecticide, yeah. just and all over it. So, but they aren't going to just disappear, so to speak. They're, well, they're here. Right. <laughs> it's a good timely question, though. So we yes. thank you for that. Now let's go on to line five, and it's about a sunset maple. Hi there. What's your specific question? Line five. Hello. Yes. Uh, I have a red sunset maple. It's about 20 foot tall now. I had it installed um, three years ago. All of the branches, well, most of the branches on the west side of the tree are dead. My question is, when should I prune it n next year? And what's the likelihood that the form will recover once I prune it? Well, that would depend on why the branch has died. Mm -hmm. Because if you not only had the branches die, but the side of the trunk uh, uh, died too, uh, then it may not ever uh, form an SI. One of the things you got to look at is sunset maples are very thin bark and are very prone to sun scalding, which basically cooks that bark and kills it. And uh, so you're going to want to nick the bark and see if you got a green cam in with a white sapwood underneath that. And if you don't, and it's brown, and then you may want to actually consider removing the tree because it's got a, you know, the tree's basically half dead already. So, and as for the pruning, you can cut off the dead any time you see it. As for the live stuff, you'd probably want to prune it. Um, well, depending on what you're trying to do, right? You can prune it in the winter before they pop in the spring, or you wait for them to start growing, and then uh, you can manage the where the new growth is going to go, and, and that by selectively pruning after you see the new shoots coming out. Yeah. And I would definitely check for what, why you've got Yeah, that's something I, that I agree. You want to start doing some checking. A three-year-old tree isn't very old, and mm -hmm. if you've got a whole section dying, we've got some problems that we need right. to worry about more than pruning, yes, but I, the priority is why, what's going on. Right. Okay, because they are great trees and should yeah. be very long-lived. So you might want to get that checked, um, checked out more thoroughly. Okay, let's go to an insect question. It's on line two. Line two. Hi. Yes, what's your question? Well, I have a yard full of holes about the size of a large pencil. I have never seen anything coming in or out of these holes. They are in the grass, they are in the bare dirt, and I don't mean just one or two. It's my entire yard. Could you tell me what this might be? No. Pencil uh -oh. size. Hmm. Something's hatched yeah. out or something's digging in there, but I yeah. not. I have no clue. <laughs> I've seen birds do a little bit of damage like that, but not an entire yard. That no. seems rather yeah. remarkable. Uh, you may want to get a um, picture or describe this more thoroughly for your local extension folks. That's, that's and, a good idea. And maybe have someone come and check it out, or maybe a yeah. master gardener, but... Uh, we don't something. have a turf specialist here yeah. on the panel, so I don't know if they would right. know, but if any of my colleagues know, I'll have to ask them. But that, I cannot tell you exactly what it is. So, Well, let's go to our uh, little Mid-American Gardener quiz next. <laughs> There's a little quiz for you. Now, let's do a question about a magnolia, and that's on line four. Magnolia question line four. Hi there. Hi there, how are you? My Doing wife, great. My wife is from Augusta, Georgia, and she wanted to know if we can possibly grow a magnolia tree here, and what can we do to make sure it flourishes? And is there a specific one? No, just magnolia tree in general. Oh, great. We, we love this question. Her, his <laughs> wife is in, in uh, uh, Georgia. That's why I asked I, that. I'm thinking yeah. she's wanting the, the southern the magnolia, southern but magnolia. We, yeah. we pretty much can't. Uh, I've seen them in our community. I have. But they, very, you have, very to, be, protected. You no have to be very careful about your, your location. You have to site it just perfectly. But beyond that, there's a lot of magnolias that do very, very well here. The Solangelanas, the Stellatas. I the love the Star Merrells. Magnolias because they're Star first yeah. and they did not frost this year. It was so exciting. <laughs> but then the saucer ones come on. And the Merrells, they do quite well. Oh, they're yes. hybrid. They're just, they're just lovely. So they're you get mini whites, magnolias. pinks, yeah. yellows, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of good magnolias. We can't have the southern that you would find in Georgia, but there's a lot of magnolias that would grow here, yes. Yeah. And it's worth trying some of them. I mean, there's some Absolutely. purples that, you know, they kind of ba- go into purple. One thing to have her do is visit the University of Illinois campus during magnolia time. Oh, my gosh, yes. It yeah. is lovely. These are s- maybe some 70-year-old, 80-year-old yes. mm-hmm. yes. magnolias. It is lovely. I have pictures from when I was an undergrad and still see them. I mean, yeah. I it's slides amazing. from when I was an undergrad. <laughs> so it's worth, um, it's worth growing them. Yeah. Well, it always goes so fast, and right. I appreciate you folks and your expertise and all the crew that's here too. It's a lot that takes uh, behind the scenes to make this go on. So we just thank you for watching. We hope you get out and have a great week gardening with flowers, trees, etc. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>